Have you ever felt like the world is getting worse and worse? That things are out of control and there is no hope for the future? If you've ever thought this way, know that you're not alone. Many people are realizing that we are living in difficult times, which the Bible calls the end times. But what does it mean? And how can we prepare for what's to come? In this video, I will show you what Jesus and the apostles said about the signs leading up to Christ's return and how they relate to what we are seeing today. You will be surprised by the accuracy of biblical prophecies, and you will better understand what God expects from us at this important moment in history. The first sign Jesus mentioned in Matthew 24 was the increase in wars, famines, and earthquakes. He said, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of this will be the beginning of the pain. Matthew 24 7a8 Did you know that in the 20th century alone, more than 100 million people died in wars? And that there are currently more than 40 armed conflicts in the world? And that every year, around 9 million people die of hunger, and more than 10,000 earthquakes are recorded? These numbers show that Jesus' words were fulfilled, and that we are experiencing the beginning of pain. The second sign that Jesus spoke about was the persecution of Christians. He said, then they will hand you over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all the nations because of me. Matthew 24 9 Did you know that there are currently more than 260 million Christians who suffer some type of persecution because of their faith? And that every year, around 4,000 Christians are killed because of the gospel? And that in many countries, Christians are prohibited from having Bibles, from meeting in churches, from evangelizing, or from expressing their beliefs. These facts show that Jesus' words were fulfilled and that we are living in times of persecution. The third sign Jesus mentioned was the increase in apostasy, falsehood, and wickedness. He said, At that time many will be offended and will betray and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and deceive many. Due to the increase in wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. Matthew 24 10a12 Did you know that there are currently more than 30,000 Christian denominations in the world, many of them teaching doctrines contrary to the Bible? and that there are many false prophets who use God's name to deceive people, performing false miracles, asking for money, or promising blessings, and that there are many people who call themselves Christians, but who live in sin, without love, without forgiveness, without holiness. These realities show that Jesus' words were fulfilled, and that we are living in times of apostasy. These are just some of the signs that Jesus and the apostles gave us about the end times. There are many others that I will show you in the next videos. But what does this all mean? It means that we are close to Jesus' return and that we need to be ready to meet him. How can we do that? Jesus himself gave us the answer. Therefore watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Matthew 24, 42. Watching means paying attention to signs, praying, reading the Bible, obeying God, preaching the gospel, loving your neighbor, and waiting in faith for the coming of Jesus. Are you doing this? Are you watching? Are you ready for Jesus' return? Have you ever wondered what will happen after you die? Have you ever wondered if there is life on other planets? Have you ever wondered why there is so much war and violence in the world? These are questions that many people ask, and which often do not find satisfactory answers. But I have good news for you. The Bible has the answers to these and other questions, and they can change your life. The Bible is the most important book that exists, because it is the Word of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and revealed to men. The Bible is our compass, our manual, our guide, for us to live according to God's will. The Bible is our source of wisdom, knowledge, faith, hope, love. The Bible is our weapon against sin, against evil, against the enemy. The Bible is our light, our truth, our salvation. But the Bible is also a book full of mysteries, prophecies, revelations, surprises. The Bible tells us about the past, present, and future of humanity, and about God's plan for its creation. The Bible shows us things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor the human heart imagined. The Bible challenges us, confronts us, transforms us. Therefore, I want to invite you to embark with me on a journey through the Bible, where we will discover together what it says about topics such as hell, aliens, sleep paralysis, the war in Israel, and much more. We will look at what the Bible says, and what it doesn't say, about these subjects, and how they relate to our Christian lives. We will see what the Bible teaches and what it corrects about our beliefs, our doubts, our curiosities. Many people have doubts about what happens after death, about the destiny of souls, about the existence of other beings in the universe, about the signs of the end of times. And they often allow themselves to be deceived by false doctrines, 
by false prophecies, by false revelations, which have nothing to do with the Bible, which is our only rule of faith and practice. Therefore, I want to share with you what the Bible really says about these subjects and show how they relate to our Christian life. I want you to stay tuned, because what I'm about to say may surprise many of you, and even shock some. My brothers and sisters, there are seven sins that have dominated the world in these last days before Jesus returns. They are so dangerous that they can separate us from God and lead us to eternal perdition. Therefore, I want to warn you about these seven sins, and show how we can overcome them by the grace of God. I want you to pay close attention, because what I'm about to say could change your life. But I'm not here to judge anyone, but to help as a friend who cares about you. The first sin is lying. A lie is the opposite of the truth, and the truth is what God is. The Bible says that God is the truth, and that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible also says that the devil is the father of lies, and that he is the enemy of God and men. Therefore, when we lie, we are moving away from God and getting closer to the devil. Lying may seem small, but it can cause big problems. Lying can destroy relationships, families, friendships, reputations, careers, and even lives. Lying can make us lose people's trust, and what's worse, God's trust. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, do not lie, but always speak the truth in love. See what the Bible says, do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator, Colossians 3 9 8 10. The second sin is greed. Avarice is the excessive love of money and material goods. Avarice is the root of all evil, as it makes us covet what is not ours, and makes us forget what really matters. The Bible says that money is a good servant, but a bad master, and that we should use it for good, not evil. The Bible also says that we cannot serve two masters, God and money, as we will love one and hate the other. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, do not be greedy, but be generous, and share what you have with those in need. See what the Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, and some, in their greed, strayed from the faith and tormented themselves with many pains. 1 Timothy 6.10 The third sin is immorality. Immorality is the lack of purity and holiness, which pleases God. Immorality is a sin that has dominated the entire world in these last days before Jesus returns. And we don't even need to talk much about that, do we? Just look at television, social media, magazines, music, in the streets, and we will see scenes full of sensuality and sexuality. Nowadays, people are no longer ashamed to expose their bodies, to engage in illicit relationships, to cheat on their spouses, to practice homosexuality, and to do other things that displease God. And you know what's worse? All of this is considered normal, and even good, by society. But immorality is an offense to God, because He is holy, and created us in His image and likeness. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, Flee from immorality and live for the glory of God. See what the Bible says. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins that a person commits, he commits outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, who was given to you by God, and that you are not your own? You were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God with your own bodies. 1 Corinthians 6 18 a 20. The fourth sin is blasphemy. Blasphemy is insult, injury, slander against God and sacred things. Blasphemy is the most serious sin a person can commit, and unfortunately we see it happen all the time in soap operas, films, series, music, and also on the internet. People use God's name in vain, mock His word, ridicule His servants, deny His existence, and even defy Him. And do you know what Jesus said about this? He said that all sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, neither in this age nor in the age to come. But what does it mean to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? It means rejecting His work, which is to convince man of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and lead him to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit is closing their heart to salvation and condemning themselves forever. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, do not blaspheme, but honor God with your lips and with your heart. See what the Bible says. I tell you that every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, 
neither in this age nor in the age to come. Matthew 12 31 a 32. The fifth sin is self-indulgence. Complacency is accommodation, laziness, indifference, which prevents us from doing God's will. Complacency is a sin that makes us miss the opportunities that God gives us and makes us waste the talents that He gave us. Complacency is a sin that makes us satisfied with what we have and makes us forget what we need. Complacency is a sin that makes us live as if Jesus would never return and makes us ignore the signs of the times. And do you know what the Bible says about this? It says that we must be vigilant, attentive, zealous, and do everything for the glory of God. She says we should make the most of the time because the days are bad. Before we say goodbye, I would like to make a special appeal to you. If you have not yet accepted Jesus as your only Savior, I invite you to reflect on what has been shared here. Jesus is the light that illuminates our lives, and accepting Him is opening the doors to true peace and grace. If this is the time for you, make that decision right now. Leave your answer in the comments if you accept Jesus as your only and saved person, whether yes or no. I want to hear your opinion. Leave your comment below with questions, thoughts, or suggestions for future stories. If you have accepted Jesus as your only Savior, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge that you came into this world, died for my sins, and rose again on the third day. I repent of my sins and I desire to walk with you every day. Write my name in the book of life, change my story, erase my past, and transform my heart. I believe that you are the way, the truth, and the life. I want to be with you every day, to be obedient to your word. Forgive as you have forgiven me and love as you have loved me. Help me to be faithful to the end. In your name, Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen. Your interaction is valuable, and your ideas always enrich our community. Finally, I express my deep gratitude for being part of this channel. Your presence and support are invaluable, and I can't wait to meet again in our next video, filled with revelations and teachings from the Bible. May the peace and grace of the Lord be with you always. See you soon.